Let me take it back. The year is 2014. You're a Five Nights at Freddy's fan, and also really into creepypastas. Wait a minute, I'm just describing my old self. You come up with the idea of mixing both a FNAF game and a creepypasta. You don't have too much experience with Game Maker, so it doesn't look and feel all that great gameplay-wise. But hey, you're still proud of it. Plus, you're the very first person to ever make a FNAF fan game, so that's gotta be some sort of achievement. What's the game called? Well, it's... Five Nights at Treasure Island is the most infamous FNAF game out of all of them, for two reasons. It's well known for being development hell, like it literally went from dev to dev, and tons of builds were made with it, only to have a final version be released last year, and also some drama behind the scenes. It was also the first FNAF fan game or something, I don't know. If you have no idea what Five Nights at Treasure Island is, basically it's a combination of Five Nights at Freddy's and the Abandoned by Disney creepypasta. However, there are sl um, slight differences between Fanati and the Abandoned by Disney story. The only similarity is the use of photonegative Mickey, despite having the different vo the voice tone that the creepypasta implied and the head of Donald. Hell, it isn't even the same island as Mowgli's palace is not mentioned. Just like TRTF, I was really obsessed with this game, despite the old version not aging well and not, never being officially completed at the time. Even the unofficial Fanatic fan games got me hooked. But now that I'm older, whenever I see these older versions, I still think they're pretty solid. Keep in mind, this was the first Fanatic fan game, so it obviously didn't age well in some areas. But for the time, it was really good. Not to mention, the creep process based on is pretty solid too. Alright, enough delaying, let's get into the games. Before continuing, I'm going to be talking about each official version of Fnatic, while mentioning some Fnatic fan games that stood out to me more than the other 10 bajillion. If I miss any Fnatic fan game that you wanted me to talk about, oh well. Ah, here we are, the game that started it all, the one that would create the boom in FNAF fan games. So is it any good? Eh, I mean it's alright. Like I mentioned before, it has not aged well. The rooms are basic, it's a bit more obvious that the camera and photo negative Mickey jump scares are gifts due to the white outlines. The jump scares themselves aren't really that great to be honest. Sometimes the suits won't even show up unless you flip up the camera first. This is this is this is this. <laughs> what the f he wasn't there though. He wasn't there. He was not there. I died. No. Yo, you did it. <coughs> However, despite the flaws, this still is not that bad for a FNAF fan game. The way of deterring Mickey and Oswald is a pretty cool and interesting mechanic, even though it does get repetitive and annoying when all your cameras are in use. There's different phone guys each night, and there's no rips from the FNAF. Wow, alright then. Let's talk about the game itself. You play as Jake, an intern from the Supernatural Studies Association, SSA for short. Two from bros, Greg and Lisa, are, are is our friends for the nights, giving us info. Somehow the audio quality for both Greg and Lisa is just as good as TRTF1, if not worse. Hello? Oh! oh God. Hey, Jake! Jesus it's me, Christ. Lisa! Oh, God. Oh. So, from what I heard, Greg left you a pre recorded message yesterday. And I, for one, think what he said was pretty stupid. I'm I sorry we still have to get our equipment ready. It hasn't been shipped yeah. in yet, so we're still yeah. waiting. We did. And I don't know if it was intentional, but Greg sounds annoyed or pissed off. Thing is, though, you look like someone who doesn't care. You just want to let your time run out and get your credits. But if you do care, then listen up. Oh, and by the way, don't screw up any of our equipment. One point does a demo, so it only lasts for two nights, unless you do a bit of trolling and access night three by pressing O on your keyboard. It doesn't add anything new, it's just a harder night two, and Lisa's phone call repeats. I think any noise that you have yet, to. so we're still waiting. That would be a <laughs> real bad idea. want you to collect data for us also, when we come I over there, don't it'll think be on to 1.0 Remastered, which is the same as 1.0 from before, no sh**. However, Anart over here decided to up the contrast slightly, and Greg's phone call is a bit different. Plus, he got a better mic, so good for him. We got a new character named Su- I, I can say this name, right? Well, f you, I'm gonna say it anyway. We have a new character named Suicide Mouse, an obvious reference to Suicide Mouse at AVI. What's cool about him though is whenever he goes into a room, he uh suicide mouses up the room by adding Mickey faces from the old cartoons, removing everything else, even the suits. And he interrupts Greg's call with with the funny music, so honestly he's a Chad. We found that shutting off one of the 
Overall, this is the weakest Fnatic version of all of them, and the most buggiest. But it's alright in general, so let's move on to... Well, I'll be damned. This is not too shabby. It's like being a small screen for whatever reason. And only one version has the game from looking bland to looking really well done. It probably has to do with the Five Nights at Treasure Island license at the time being given to a dev team called the Purity Sinners due to Anar losing lack of a motivation to complete the game. Just like 1.0, this controls the same, except there's a new mechanic of hiding under the desk, which gives you a 50-50 chance of surviving. The only thing that hasn't changed is the voice lines for Photonegative Mickey and Oswald. Oh yeah, and Suicide Mouse has committed suicide so he doesn't appear in this build along with the phone people. Well, there really isn't really more any more to discuss, so let's get into. I decided to combine for both 3.0 and 5.0 for this segment because there really isn't too much to talk about in 5.0 and 3.0. And I bet you're wondering why I didn't mention 4.0. Well, it's because the trailer for it was Relentlessly Shadhan. So the devs were like, fine, now no one gets to play this. F you. Anyways, yeah, 3.0. This is the most controversial build out of all of them. Why, you may ask? Well, for a variety of reasons, actually. One of them being Phone Negative Mickey being replaced with a new suit, Willy, reference to the cartoon Steamboat Willy, and lots of drama behind the scenes between Purity Cinders and the Fnatic community, which I will not go into because who honestly cares. However, this is the longest demo build, so there must be new stuff, right? Well, it's sorta of mixed. It uses the same map from 2.0. The same script is used for Greg and Lisa. Hey, Hello, bud. This is Greg. Thanks, Thanks for, for helping us out with this again. Yeah. Yeah. Normally we'd have, one of, we'd have one of our staff with an Still... Except their voice changed again. We do, however, have a new phone guy named Henry, who tells us to find him in pirate caverns after the third night. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Oh, thank goodness, got through. Hey, whew. Listen, please. My name is Henry. I know what's going on. Uh, I can't tell you over the phone. <laughs> they might be listening. Please, just... Just if you can hear this, please... Meet me in Pirate's Cavern tomorrow and tell no one! I promise I'll tell you everything you- So after seeing a funny white woman that makes you go deaf- Why is the woman white? Who is she? What? The demo ends, so we'll never know what happened to him. He's probably alright though. Also, we got a new suit named Impure Mouse, aka Mini, and that's 3.0. And I guess a slight bit of 4.0 from the beginning. Oh, last thing about 4.0. The devs changed over to Subover X3 and Blackout. Remember those names, it will be important later. 5.0 is the final demo build of Fnati, and the devs changed AGAIN! But guess who it is? It's none other than our boy in our 1996, his grand return. Oh yeah, baby. How is he improved from 1.0? Oh, very. The style of the game changed and it has this odd rough looking style that I don't really like to be honest. But it's a style, I'll give it that. None of the suits move um anything else, you big fing dolt. They're actually not called suits anymore. They refer to as tunes. Get that in your smooth, tiny screen, you fucking piece of shit! So before I was rudely interrupted, none of the tunes move, and I guess it was just to show off the game. Not too sure. Three new mechanics were added. You have to shut doors, use your flashlight on the two entryways, and use the number pad on your keyboard to go to each camera. Not too big of a fan of the number pad mechanic, especially since there's no minimap, 
showing what room you're looking at. But just like Remastered 1.0, there's no timer and it goes on forever to show off the game, I guess. Alright bro army, let's finally get into the build I'm really looking forward to discussing. Well guys, after six years in development, Fire Nights at Treasure Island fully released two years ago. Like the other builds, this will switch over to another dev team, Radiance. But don't worry, and Art is with them too. So remember the praise I gave to 2.0 with the environment and look of the build? Well, copy and paste those praises and multiply them by 10 million, because my god, this is, if this isn't a glow up, then I don't know what is. The tunes look amazing and are actually pretty unsettling, which help the lighting in the rooms all glam as a raw and look a lot better. And while Greg, Henry, and Lisa changed voices again, they are way better audio wise. Plus, we got captions, what's not to love? We got new characters and a slight changes to the old bros, like Acephalus. You know, that headless Goofy that was supposed to appear in previous builds, but never showed up. His head did appear in all builds, though. Undying. Not, no, 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 not that, un, not that Undying, you dumb f***ing cretin. This one. A Mickey costume with no eyes, who was originally a super hot enemy. Mother. <laughs> The face who appeared in all the previous builds as a, like a Golden Freddy, except he isn't now. He's just a stretched Mickey face with no legs and human eyes. Neat. Mortimer, aka Suicide Mouse, is now an Easter egg and acts the same way he did in the remaster 2.0. He does look happy though, so good for him. I'm glad things are getting better for him. Pluto, he's just mad chillin', not gonna lie. Disembodied now has Donald's hat and little black legs. Cute. Oswald isn't just some dark black thing, and he's also very happy. Awesome. Impure Mouse, who goes by Impurity now, and Photo Negative Mickey are mostly the same as they were. There's one more character that's in this version, but we'll get the we'll get we'll I'll save them for later. But that's not even all of them. Yeah, we have unlockable characters from the custom night. Classic photo negative Mickey and the face. I mean so they're, they're self-explanatory. They're all from the old builds. More specifically, 1.0. A mascot photo negative Mickey a pretty good nod to the original creepypasta. Pete, I mean, yeah, it's Pete from the old Mickey cartoons, and he was supposed to be in 2.0, but he didn't, obviously. Our boy Willie is back, and he got a FNAF 3 Balloon Boy treatment. Deserved, honestly. And now, a surprise to be sure, but a welcomed one, Sparky. The animatronic hoax way back in the FNAF 1 days? Personally, they should have gone with his original design, but I digress. Now, gameplay and story. Starting up the game introduces you to a cutscene, where Greg tells Jake about the Fire Nation's Treasure Island. What the? Whoa. Where Greg tells Jake about the Treasure Island stuff and for you to go there. Just like all the others, your main way of getting rid of these guys is to shut your camera off. Though you do have the ability to stand still to get rid of Acephalus and Undyne, and also shutting off the lights to get rid of the face, Sparky, and Mascafo and Negative Mickey. Now you need to also keep track of your power, just like FNAF 1, or else you're gonna deal with RNG. Due to those that are deterred with cameras, have a 50 50 chance of killing you when your lights are off. Just like 3.0, you get a call from Henry on night 3 stating to go to power caverns, except the game doesn't end and you beat Night 3. This is honestly the scariest part of the game, in my opinion. Without dark power caverns is, the only way of seeing the place is a dinky flashlight, and how it's a point and click adventure game now is a bit unsettling and I kinda like that. After dealing with the face on floor 1 and on 9 on floor 2, you enter a room with They are listening and They are lying written all along the walls, with a variety of Mickey drawings all over the walls. The room looks trashed, not to mention the flashes of Undyne becoming more and more frequent as the cutscene continues. What what happened here? Okay, on to night 4! <laughs> Each night after 1, 2, and this night, 
a cutscene place. It looks like whoever we are is in a cage somewhere, along with Mother appearing each time and getting closer and closer each night. What do these cutscenes mean? I don't know, beats me. And now, night six. the characters and I was gonna save one for last well here they are this is hourglass an amalgamation of all the tunes for negative Mickey Oswald impurity disembodied and cephalus specifically I don't think I've ever seen a FNAF final boss as unique as them it's pretty cool the way of dealing with them is to make sure you know the starting positions of each of the tunes that are manifested inside of it and act as how you deal with them so you better have paid attention in the previous nights because this is basically the final exam of the game after completing the hellscape you're in pirate caverns again and head down to floor three as henry instructed obviously once you get to the padlock you put in six 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 because haha funny double number and After seeing your sleep paralysis demon, you put in the correct code and enter the Disney Vault. And it looks like a normal drawing desk, with the variety of Mickey and Oswald related stuff in the background. But then Mother appears again and forgets what social distancing is and says it's here my children and that's the end of the game except there's new modes the aforementioned custom night and also a classic mode what is it exactly well it's a full night one through five of finale version 1.0 it's pretty awesome not to mention after night three it has the old power caverns that was meant to appear in 1.0 it's pretty cool and basically, what you gotta do is that you just gotta survive for 60 seconds against uh, the face. And that's all the official Fnatic games. If you think this video's done, oh, you're so wrong. We got a few more Fnatic fan games to talk about. Obviously, I won't go over all of them, but I'll go over the ones that stood out to me more. These won't be long, I'll try to get them over quickly. So not even a second into the game, and I've learned this was made in Clip Team Fusion 2.5. That's awesome. MBD was created by Subover X3 and Blackout. You know, the same people behind 3.0. So this is the oddest game so far, and I haven't even mentioned the end of Disney yet. Well, uh, what's the story then? Uh, um, you play as, um... Uh, well, um, uh, uh, your mom, and they're at, um, um, well, they're obviously my house. We got plenty of characters like Black and White Mickey, which drill, with drills as fingers, Duck, Armless Woman, the Rats, except this one has a jump to kill her face. You have no phone calls and tips are given, are given to you each night, so how your main character finds out how to de deal with these guys is beyond me. You're given pills in order to keep your heart rate under 100, or else you're gonna have a heart attack and be game-ended. Clearly, the solution of getting rid of these tunes is to blink. 
because they're op they're the opposite of SCP-173. Except for one, that armless woman, aka Arkensia. Her eyes change color and you need to do it like a Simon says and hit the same color as hers four times. Usually in, in every FNAF game and or fan game, there's always five nights, depending on the, on the type of game, a bonus night, and or a custom night. So obviously this game has ten nights. So overall, it's seven normal pills out of ten blue Hortensias. Moving on. Ah, well if Dizzy didn't like this video already, then they'd really hate this segment. Fun fact, Blackout from before worked on this along with the new guy, Malarat, aka Phone Negative Mickey at the time. Okay, story time. We're back in Treasure Island. For, for some reason. Oh, what's the lore of this game, by the way? Like, why are you here? That's a very good question, because literally the guy on the tip says, why are you here? You just feel like it. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Like, literally, that's, <laughs> li literally, that's actually a really good reason. And the boat that goes there, because, you know, boats at Disneyland go to abandoned parks, shows up in Five Nights. I gotta say, I am not the biggest fan of the game style. It's kind of like 5.0 style, but less rough. The characters, this time, are referred to as Hellbound suits, because that isn't slightly edgy at all. I mean, honestly, they're not too bad. Like, they're slightly creepy, but it feels like the devs were trying a bit too hard with the creep factor. What is funny, though, is the voice lines. They're trying so hard to sound edgy and scary, where it's to the point where they sound pretty funny from the delivery and pronunciations. So do you understand a single word the, uh, suits, the Hellbound suits are saying? He's clearly saying something. <laughs> Alright, what did he say? Uh... Oh, something about, oh heavens, no house, only these, I don't know. <laughs> what is this name? What did Oswald say? What is this saying? No, what did he say? What is this saying? That's what he said, I don't know. <laughs> like, like Oswald said, you're already gonna suck, my- <laughs> Oh, he doesn't want you to show- how dare you show your face? After what I've done. You know, after all, uh, crashing a uh, f***ing San Andreas with Sprunk. <laughs> 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 Oh, cool, but, but he, did he just say you got good call? Alright, gameplay. In four cameras, there's generators that take two billion years to fully wind up, in which they must be all turned on in order to beat the night. If any of the suits enter, you hit one of the two buttons with a three second cooldown on each, or hide under the desk from Donald and Daisy. Since this is a Fnatty game, after night three, you go to Pirate Caverns, because why not, lol? Not even joking, you go there just because. The guy tells you about the mysterious Floor 3, in which we encounter the super hot enemy I mentioned before. Well, how do we escape him? Well, obviously, you grab a cleaver from Floor 2 and chuck it at him. What? Best part is, the game never tells you that you need to grab a cleaver. There could have been some sort of hint from the guy, something like, Hey, you might want to find like something on floor 2 to defend yourself, or there's a super hot enemy. But wandering around until you find it works too, I guess. You think you'd be done after cleaning that fight, but no, we got a quick time event! You gotta mash the spacebar for what seems to be 10 decades, and credits. Overall, not the not it's not the best FNAF fan game, but it could have been worse. The one complaint is that it just feels too edgy and dumb at times. I mean, it literally says this after the credits. Four super hot enemies out of ten space bars. Final game we're looking at today, and it's a game from a Fnatic fan series called The Last Ones. An unofficial sequel to Fnatic. What's the Lost Ones about? Uh, I mean, I can tell you the story of the game we're playing. Just like the official Fnatic fan game, you play as the intern Jake. Greg tells us, oh, I should probably mention, Greg's our only phone guy, so Lisa has canonically died in this universe. Very sad. Greg tells us that Henry went missing and while they were investigating Treasure Island, and we send us over there. Our main objective? Find Henry and find out what's happening on this island. Just like the official game, the characters aren't referred to as suits, rather as illusions. By the way, this was made by the same people behind the end of Disney, Blackout and Malrat. Damn, this is a pretty big step up if I'm gonna be honest. While not as good as the official 2020 Fanatic, I'd say this is 
this comes in second place. The illusions have pretty good designs. The hourglass on them is an odd design choice though, but I guess it has some sort of story purpose. Also, they have funny voices. Also, it sounds like a smoker and photo negative Mickey sounds like a person doing a half decent Mickey impression. Biggest problem of the game, to me, is Minnie. She has an interesting mechanic that I haven't really seen in a FNAF fan game where you need to listen to the ambience, as when it goes silent, you must find her in er, any of the cameras and shut it off. It sounds easy on paper, but however, you're giving a little time to find her, and by the time you do, she's already killed you. So yeah, call me a coward for not completing I3, but do you really want me to go through a cycle of, of death? There's gonna be a remake of this version, FNAF 2017. It seems quite interesting. FNAF 2017 gets six fun negative Mickey hourglasses out of 10 Oswald monitors. Fire vs. Treasure Island just surprises me. It's been in development hell for six years, but still manages to come out even with the original dev working on it, which you don't really see too much of that those in these days. In fact, Radiance is making a, an official sequel, Uplita's Kaza. And judging from the screenshots and trailer we got, we might have another banger. So class, what did we learn from today's video? Support Radiance and talk about how awesome they are, and that even in the FNAF fanbase, Disney rules all over all of them with the Treasure Island games. I give Final Fantasy Treasure Island 8 Ds out of 10 nuts. I don't have an outro, so Markiplier, take it away. So thank you all so much for watching. Check out other videos I've done in the description below or the annotations that appear over there. Thanks again, everybody. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye! I did it! I don't know what the hell happened. He was just kind of standing there. I kind of wanted to talk to him. <laughs> what the fuck?